Over the years, Piers Morgan has created headlines taking aim at presidents, prime ministers, celebrities, even, of course, royals. And in recent weeks, a few Australians have also come under fire from the British breakfast TV host. So we thought it was time to ask Piers Morgan a few questions of our own. And I caught up with him from the set of his TV show, Good Morning Britain, for this exclusive interview. Piers Morgan presses Trump. Let's go. Come on, Piers. Do you identify as a feminist? Are you a feminist? No, I wouldn't say I'm a feminist. Ouch, no love lost between Pierce and the Duchess of Sussex. She ghosted me, right? Meghan Markle ghosted me. Pierce Morgan is with us. You know, your only mistake in TV in the US was lecturing Americans about guns. How many more the kids law? have to die before you guys you... say, look, we want less guns, not more? Pierce, thank you for your time. I'd like to start with a name association game. So I'll give you a name and you tell me what first comes to mind. All right, Prince Harry. <laughs> uh, Prince Harry, cheeky chappy, uh, great guy, hugely popular in this country and recently got married to an old friend of mine who ditched me like a sack of potatoes the moment she met him. Theresa May. Theresa May, the worst Prime Minister in the history of Great Britain. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, uh, Machiavellian, curious, unique character, half good, half bad, Known him a long time, personally like him, wouldn't vote for him. And finally, Jacinda Ardern. Jacinda Ardern, I think, cometh the hour, cometh the woman. Uh, what an extraordinary display of leadership she has shown in the last uh, two weeks. Somebody that I think every country around the world would think, I wish our leader was a bit like that. Well, Piers, I know for a long time you've called for an end to the National Rifle Association's political influence in the United States and for America's gun laws to actually be tightened. What's your reaction to seeing Australian politicians now appealing to the American gun lobby for support to weaken gun laws here in our country in Australia? I think it's an absolute disgrace and I'm glad to see the furore that's erupted as a result of this very good investigation which has exposed right-wing politicians in Australia as doing these dirty deals or trying to with what they thought was a National Rifle Association. And the fact that they've been conned into doing this is actually good investigative journalism because it reveals an attitude of mind. You know, Australia and Britain share one thing in common. In the mid-90s, we both suffered, in, within a few months of each other, utterly appalling mass shootings. You know, one was in Tasmania at Port Arthur, one was in Scotland, uh, in Britain. I think that that showed both countries that there is no need to have weapons of war in civilian hands. And we both effectively banned almost all guns from civilian usage. The idea that there are now Australian politicians, in light of what happened in New Zealand, are actively trying to cohort and do business with the NRA, the most insidious lobby group in the world, I think is disgraceful. And speaking of Christchurch, I know you were also disgusted by the comments made by Australian Senator Fraser Anning in the wake of the attacks. I'm curious, if the Senator was appearing on your show, what would your first question to him be? Uh, I think I would struggle to not punch him in the face, which is something that I know that he likes to do to, to uh, young you know, teenagers when they confront him about his disgusting racism. You know, what he did within hours of that attack in effectively telling Muslims, 50 of whom had just been slaughtered, innocent Muslims attending prayer, what he did in basically blaming Muslims for what happened to them that day was a monstrosity. What baffles me is how somebody with that mentality is able to get elected. So if he was sitting here, once I you know, curbed the urge to punch him, I would be saying, what kind of human being when 50 innocent people are gunned down in their place of worship thinks that the smart thing to do is to get onto, onto Twitter and release a statement blaming them for what happened to themselves. I just, I just thought it was disgusting. Another of our Australian politicians, or former politicians at least, Julia Gillard, recently appeared on your show. Here's a reminder. In a country that many people for a long time presumed was kind of the epitome of misogyny and sexism, how did you find leading Australia? Now, Piers, do you really think that's how the world views us here in Australia? 
Well, I think it's historically uh, something that Australia has struggled with. And I would look at the way that Ms Gillard, when she was Prime Minister, the first female Prime Minister of Australia, got treated as an example of what I was talking about. Now, I do think that Australia, like other countries, and Britain hasn't been immune either from this, has dragged itself kicking and screaming into a more equal society. But I didn't think I was exactly breaking a trade secret, even to Australians, that men in your country historically have been perhaps a little veering towards the misogyny and sexism side. But maybe you want to tell me now that's never happened. Well, we are the first breakfast show in Australia with two female hosts. Yeah, I saw the fallout to that appointment, that announcement on your show, where you had the first all-female lineup, and there was just so much misogyny and sexism labelled at you guys. And I just thought... Well, there you go. That's an illustration that Australia, like other countries, has a long way to go. You know, equality means equality. And people should be judged on their ability and not on their gender. Now, just before I let you go, I have to ask you about Harry and Meghan. Pierce, are they really that bad? Is Meghan really fake and a piece of work, as I know you've said before? You know what? I, I, I'm sorry to have to say this, but I'm afraid I think she is. You know, I got to know her quite well over a two-year period and we would message each other a lot, email each other a lot. She said, I'm coming to London, can, can we meet up? And we went to my local pub. I had a couple of pints of real ale. She had a couple of dirty martinis and we chewed the fat for a couple of hours. And she said afterwards from her cab, I had such a great time and hope to see you again. And really platonic, I hasten to add. Uh, but she went in that cab that night to a party where Prince Harry was at. The next night, she went out on a date with him. I never heard from her again, ever. And I don't like people that behave like that. It's kind of rude. And it showed me that she, I'm afraid, is probably a bit of a social climber. Although some people really like her and are falling for this act, I'm afraid I see a bit of a hard-nosed actress who's been using people on her way up to what is now, of course, the top, which is marrying into the royal family. But good luck to Harry. I hope he knows what he's doing. And uh, if it all goes wrong, don't come crying to me. I tried to warn you. Well, he certainly can't deny that. <laughs> Pierce, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Great to see you. Oh, there you go. Great bet, interview. I bet, I see a great interview. I, I bet he wouldn't turn down a dirty martini if well, she rang back yeah, and exactly. said, would you like to catch up? Exactly. Yeah. Sounds like he's a little bit jilted. <laughs> a little bit bitter. He uses the term ghosted, so he thinks that, yeah, he's been, uh, he's been left behind by Megan. But, you know, interesting take. Yeah, and strong views on Australia and what's happening here, which is, which is fascinating. Yeah, he he's, also a, he's got a couple of great books out, his uh, Secret Diaries. He was the editor of the News at World and Daily Mirror. He's got great insights mm. into celebrities and the royals. Mm. Very entertaining writer. Mm. Happy to they, share them as well. Yeah. They love to hate him. Yeah. <laughs>